We got a soil pit going on here in the date orchard. I wanted to take a look at my roots and see how they're doing, how they're making progress out here in the basin. And I'll be doggone, that's a good thing I did this because remember, remember I was telling you that <clears throat> date palms, they put roots in the whole basin. And I know that, but every now and then you just have to do a little proofing. This is down about three feet here. Three feet, let's see. One, two, three, heading toward four. About 48 inches. Well, anyway, we got some nice roots in here. <coughs> Sorry about the wild camera work. Very good. Very, very, very good. We have roots out here. Good soil structure. Huh. That's a moisture. Very good, very good. That's what I'm talking about, Willis. You can get a ball. It's a weak ball. Nothing's sticking to my hand, so this needs to be irrigated. I was thinking I had more time, but apparently I do not. Look at that. Look at those healthy roots. You have to have a backhoe to get down in here to be able to do this. Oh my goodness. That's nice. And see here, date roots do not have root hairs, but they do have secondary roots. So this is the main root here. And if there's any fertilizer or any food in the ground to be had, the tree will send the root, the tree will send forth the secondary root right here to go and find it. And it'll even branch off into a tertiary like here. Here's a secondary. If you look real close, you see some little tertiary roots right here coming off. So it'll just keep branching until it can eat. So this falls in the know your soil category of the farm. And I'm a good distance from the, the tree. I'm about to Oh, hey, there's a tree over there. And there's the other tree over there. I'm a good 15 feet from the tree. 15 feet from the tree. Nah, nah, not 15. 15 would be over here. This is more like 15 over here. But guess what? There's roots there too. Look at that. Son of a, son of a, son of a root. There we go. Yeah, this would be the primary root. And the one sticking up from it would be the secondary root. You only get secondary roots if there's some food in the ground. If there's something for the tree to go and get. So fertilizer I put down. If you look real close, pay close attention, you see a lot a little bitty root trying to come off of the secondary root. That's a tertiary, a third root. So if you got third roots, there's definitely something to be had. 
Let's see if I can get a little closer. Now the big root is first, the smaller root is second, and the third root is tertiary. You only get secondary and tertiary roots if you have good fertile soil. And you can see here, this is the soil. All that good compost material that I have on the top. All that good organic matter that's slowly breaking down, making itself available to the roots down below. In fact, that's a downright beautiful soil layer there. Man, that's nice. Take a long time to get that thing like that. Years. So that's good organic matter. So it's slowly becoming available to the roots down below. All right. That's how you grow good dates. Take a little look at the orchard. But I am very happy. I'm going to have to put the water back in on this basin. I thought I had really hit it hard about a month ago, but apparently these trees are really working. And my soil is a little sandier than I realized. So I'm coming back in here. I'd be back in here with it tomorrow. Wow. So you have a backhoe. If you don't have a backhoe, you can also do this with a shovel. Just dig a hole and pay attention to your roots. If I get an auger or a backhoe or I mean um, a post hole digger and just start chopping down into the ground and examining the soil as you bring it up. All right. Well, hey, this is the real Sam Cobb and. Um, We're done here. Hope you enjoyed this video, a little soil analysis video, root zone. Oh, let me tell you one other thing. Let's talk, let's look at the the soil structure. Let's let's look at the roots, the soil structure. And we seem to be pretty uniform. I don't feel any major changes. Well, wait a minute. There's a change here. So it's kind of pretty sandy. Uh, sandy or loamy sand up here headed towards sandy loam but definitely when you get into this area you get into more gravel and I'm down about mm, 24 inches and then you drop down some more at about 36 inches you get into some more clay I mean a solid sandy loam down at the here those roots oh great still hitting roots still hitting roots at 36 inches 36 inches 15 feet from the tree what do you say that's good all right well sorry this video is so long but hey it's, this is a real educational video like I said every now and then I'll drop a nugget my goodness look at this oh man this is good soil you have here, main root here. There's roots here, there's roots here. This is about 12 inches below the ground. Roots, small roots. I'm 15 inches from the tree. Little avalanche there. Look at there. Hey, roots, 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 roots. Look at that. Very good. Next for a healthy tree. All right, I've been waiting for the root to get out here. It's been about 10 years. Been about 10 years for them to get into place real good. All right, but now it's time to begin to manage the whole basin of the farm. The whole basin of the, between the trees. You know, right next to the tree is good, but it's good to manage the basin because there are roots out here in the basin. And my theory is to get good fruit, you allow these roots to work for you. So if these roots can work for you, 
So that can bring some food back to the main tree. And the more roots you have working for you, the, the better quality the fruit is going to be. Just simple as that. This is down about 24 to 30 inches right in through here. And down here 36, they're still good. And remember, we're like 10 or 15 feet away from the tree. Tree over there, tree over there. Closer tree there. Yeah. We're about 10 or 15 feet. All right, this is the real Sam Cobb. Thank you for joining me for this video. I have on my sun hat today. Uh, it's supposed to be about 100 degrees here in the next day or two. <clears throat> 100 degrees, as far as I'm concerned, is still a cool day because we could, <laughs> it could be 115 or 120. So we'll take 100 degrees this time of year gladly. All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Sam Cobb is out of here.